All right, I'm going to bring y'all in on a project I'm doing. It's a little different than uh, what I normally do. All right, I'm going to show you how I get from this work order, which comes with a picture, to Now, and sometimes in the process, there will be some discussions with the decorator as to the viability of the numbers that they're using. Um, now, this, this particular job doesn't really have any questionable numbers going on. Uh, a lot of times when I say questionable, I mean uh, like a sofa being too deep or too tall or, or any of these things that make it look out of proportion for what it's made for. So, but on this job, there's none of that. But, you know, sometimes there are some other discussions that need to be had. Now, are you sure you really need this? Because it's really cutting into my hunting and fishing time. What? What? Did you really just say that? The work order shows for having the overall uh, width, you know, from side to side, up and down, is 53. Each of these parts, are going to be 18 with a nine inch you know thickness down here which you can see right there now i'm also doing mine i'm cutting my board 17 and three quarters uh, allowing for a little bit of uh, padding that'll be on both sides of it uh, so it will have an overall appearance of 18 18 ish Because I'm doing this 17 and 3 quarters, and for me to have 53 overall this way, I had to divide out 35 and a quarter, which comes to 17 and 5 eighths each on those. So I have my one board here, I have my long board here that's 53 by 17 and 3 quarters, then I'll have two boards that are 17 and 5 eighths long by 17 and 3 quarters wide. All right, to show you how I'm going to come about having my 9 inch drop area that they show, you know, for this area here down, I'm going to start with a 7 inch rail, which will be an inch and an eighth uh, by 7 uh, poplar that I use. This layer here will be the plywood that uh, it's about five eighths of an inch thick. The first layer of padding on top of that will be a half inch. It's probably just a little bit less than half inch um, carpet pad, which is high density foam. And I use that when I'm using, you know, doing these seats that have don't have a lot of padding on them so that it kind of helps uh, have a good buffer between you and the board so you always want to have some kind of a high density carpet pad or something as that that little layer before you get to it and then on top will be a one inch uh, pretty much medium to high density foam uh, on top of that now i'll wrap a dacron over this but i'm not counting that because uh, it really kind of gets smashed down so so that'll all add up to just about where my seam will come down to nine, even though it'll be just a little bit thicker, but the seam will come down about nine. Okay, I'm gonna start by building this box right here and it'll be overall 53 by 17 and three quarters. I'll have long rails here, and then I'll have end rails that cap it off on both sides. So I'm gonna cut these two boards, and then there'll be actually four of these boards that'll go all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these cut out, and then I'm gonna cut out these boards, and I'll show you the dimensions for all these uh, later. The way I come about the length of this board is you have to remember it's being capped on this side and capped on this side, and this overall has got to be 53. 
Now the boards I use are an inch and an eighth, so you've got an inch and an eighth at this board, inch and an eighth at this board, which comes to two and a quarter. So you take the 53, subtract the two and a quarter, and you come with 50 and three quarters. Okay, basically the same thing coming here for this board, these boards here. This needs to be 17 and 5 eighths. This board is an inch and an eighth. You subtract that, you come up with, you got 17 and 5 eighths minus inch and an eighth, you've got 16 and a half. So these boards come out 16 and a half. And of course these are all seven inch. Now eventually, after I get this box, these boxes built, I'm gonna add flat boards at the bottom across on each end here that'll lay flat so they'll be able to mount the base to them. After I get all this built, these boards here will go on top of it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the long board this way to give it stability, to give these stability, have it all in one board. And then I'm gonna put boards across here and here and then add these boards this way, the short boards that way and that way. I now have the boards I'll need to get the basic framing started. What you see here is this represents uh, the inside of my box, which is, this is the inside and these are going to get drilled this way, up and down, you know, three of them here, three of them here, three of them there, and three of them there, which that's what these are on the two boards. And, and what they'll do is, of course, they'll pilot holes for these boards that'll come off of them or go away from them on the other side. But this is the, uh, from the here, outside to here, to outside to here is 17 and three quarters which represents the, what I need to come off of that for the width of the, these boards. And you can see I've got these pre-marked uh, in three places so that once those other boards are attached, then I can cap them off right here. So what I'm gonna be doing first, of course, is hooking these long boards together with their short caps. And then I'll come back and I'll hook these boards off to the sides of that by screwing from the inside and then I'll do my cap screws from this side. So the first thing I'm going to start doing is start drilling the holes out. A little tip, if you don't want one of these, keep these fresh. All right, here's my starter box, and of course you can see in here my pre-drilled holes for the boards that'll go out from it. my cross is pretty much put together now. Uh, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to add on this outer part, I'm going to add a board across here. Now I can install my top boards. I'm going to run my long board this way is because these joints are weaker than say this long one board here. So what I want for my top board is for it to be one solid piece to help give stability to the weaker part of this. And then I can piece off of these because we've already got the stronger board all the way across here.
As you can see on these frames, uh, each has a, a place where you can screw it down. And this area, you know, is about four to five inches. So I've measured what I need to have, you know, all the way to at least in here to the outer edge of my uh, frame. And I figured that I needed six inch boards. All right, here are my six inch boards. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna screw right in here on all four sides of this. And that'll give strength to it, kind of in a corner block way, and also provide a, a place to screw down the base. frame is finished now and ready to move to upholstery. Okay, you can see this pattern. Uh, it has what looks like some dominating, it doesn't show up so hard here as it does in my eyes, but um, you've got kind of what looks like some dominant blue stripes going on here. So I'm gonna go in between them. I couldn't center on a circle because the width of the fabric going this way for that center there if I slid, uh, its, its center is in between. And if I slid just even that little amount to the center of one of these, it's gonna make it too short on one end for this project because the, the top is 53. That means I have to cut it uh, around 54 and a half. And this fabric's just won't allow for that on both sides. You know, even though it's 56, it won't allow you to slide and, and get what you need there. So I'm gonna be centering in between and in between um, in these centers. And, and I'm trying to you know always look at this and say what says uh, yeah, I should center between what circles. Like I said, I'm seeing a dark blue stripes here and here. So I'm gonna go in between. Now what I'm gonna do is block it out bigger than I need. I'm gonna take it over and lay it on, lay it exactly the way I want it on my frame. And then I'm gonna do some markings, you know, for each little corner, inset corner area, and then also on the outer edges to know, and then I'll outside those uh, marks, I'll draw my lines that allow for salvage. And then on the corners, I'll miter it a little bit. Now I'm gonna go around to where all my marks are and I'm gonna make another mark about five eighths inch away from each one. And then I can draw lines for the cuts. And then from there, what I'm gonna do is just miter the corners of each one and it'll be ready for the boxing. Got my seamstress sewing up this top. I do not like to sew.
Okay, I got my cover somewhat uh, stay tacked on. Uh, what that involves is just going from you know from side to side and then putting just partially stapling down here, not putting it in deep, and then doing it on that side, this side, this side, and trying to get this you know get it pulled and ready to go. But I want to show you how I'm working this uh, these corners. It'd be almost impossible to get a perfect um, seam here like you would on, say, on a box where you just seam it all, you know, put it all in and then just sock it down and then staple it. Well, it'd be impossible to do it with, on, with four of these going around here like this. So what I like to do is I'll start working from these sides, these fronts, and then start working down these sides. And this one will go in here and it's designed, it came around uh, more around the corner and then I'll staple it uh, to this board this way and then I'll come back with this one that was folded up here and I'll wrap it around this Dacron and then and then fold it right in the corner like that so when you, I'll show you what it looks like when I get done but that's just the the uh, the premise of how it's going to do. You can see I've kind of got this nice and smoothed over into this corner. Now I'm going to and when I come, I'll do the same thing. I'll start out here, work my way around, and then come in here and finish this off. Mm -hmm. 